Hi, happy new year uh, to everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about whether data science uh, is a, a right, uh, a proper career choice in 2021. I'll be talking about uh, two questions. One is, uh, is data science a hype? Is still a hype? It used to be considered a uh, hype uh, in past. Well, it's still a hype. And second question is, is data science a good career choice in uh, 2021? So if you are a student or a working professional wanting to get into data science, I think you'll find this video uh, somewhat useful. And if you have more questions, you can also, uh, yeah, just ask me in the comment section, okay? Uh, in the next slide, I'll show you a job report from LinkedIn, the popular job site LinkedIn, uh, which will answer this, you know, to these two questions, but there are also other aspects to the answer I'll be talking in the next few slides. But let's go into this uh, job report from LinkedIn. Um, it's a job report for US job trends for 2020. And that's important, right? It's not a, a, an old one. It's a, a fairly new uh, job trend report, but it only takes into account the job trends in the United States. But you can fairly assume that it's pretty much the same in other parts of the world, for example, in, uh, in Europe or in Asia and other parts of the world. Um, so that's something we can assume. Um, let me read it out for you. So here it says that data and artificial intelligence continue to make a strong showing in our emerging jobs report. But roles across sales and health, healthcare also took spots. So here are the job trends from this year's list. So from the, you know, this, by the way, this is the first phase of that report where it starts with data and AI. Uh, making the headlines, making, you know, being being at the forefront of the trend. So that says that, you know, there is a growing demand for data science. And the next para talks about it. The data science is booming and starting to replace legacy roles. Uh, unsurprisingly, data science is a field that is seeing continued growth on a tremendous scale. That's important, right? So it, it says that, you know, it's growing at a tremendous scale. But uh, our data source, data scientists, may be augmenting responsibility traditionally done by statistician as some industries like insurance gear up for the future, right? Um, so, well, first of all, data science or data science-like roles used to exist even before the world data science exists, right? They used to be statistician working in many parts of the um, many sectors, right? For example, in insurance, in healthcare, uh, in manufacturing industry and so on and so forth. Um, but they were not called data scientists. Now, this word data science is being used to replace those traditional uh, or more legacy uh, roles. Um, so that's one important insight that not only it's the role is growing, the demand for this role is growing, but it also saying that it's also replacing the, uh, the legacy more data related uh, jobs, for example, uh, statisticians, or even for that matter, quant roles in, in the banking and financial service industries. Um, so this answers the two questions that, yes, it's no longer just a hive. We see there is a real demand in the market, but there are different nuances of it. And we'll, we'll talk about that. It's not that hunky dory. It's not that all positive thing. There are also some downside of it. And we'll, we'll talk about that as well. Okay, uh, but but the answer is that yes, there is quite good demand and the trend is only increasing and it has been increasing for the last 10 years, right? Um, not just this year, but also in the last four or five years, I have been seeing that the number of jobs is quite, is growing uh, at a very fast rate. Um, there are a few other things that we will discuss. Uh, there are some of the things, good things, some of the not so good things also about, uh, you know, uh, moving to a data science role. Educational qualifications, first thing, right? Um, there used to be a, a discussion five years back whether you need a master's degree or a PhD degree to be able to work as a data scientist. And what I have been observing is that people from less, quali uh, less formal qualification, let's call that way, are also getting jobs uh, as data scientists in many different organizations. They don't have to have a master's or a PhD. Even some people with um, students with just bachelor's degrees are getting jobs, good jobs in 
many places. So that's not a criteria any longer. Although having a formal qualification in research helps uh, sometimes, um, especially in some sectors, not in all sectors though. Certifications, certifications um, will uh, themselves not help you getting a job, but uh, they will um, help you to learn. So that's important thing. It's not like you will do it for the heck of it, but you will do this certification to learn more and more about the field and that will help you getting a job. But certification as such um, will not uh, be much use unless you, you have learned uh, a great deal from doing those certifications. Online degrees, right? Things have changed for online degrees, right? Before pandemic, before 2020, right? Uh, now even the offline degrees are taught in online mode. So the respect for online degrees have uh, improved has improved uh, in the last one year after the coronavirus pandemic. So yes, it is getting a lot more attention that you know that used to get in past. And the self-learning, it goes without saying that the most important aspect of uh, you know educating yourself in data science is self-learning. There are so many things free out of uh, out uh, on the on the internet, be it on YouTube or on you know different blogs then take advantage of that. The problem with these free sources is that it's very unstructured, right? In most YouTube channels, data science channels, you will see that, you know, the content is not very uh, well structured. And that's a problem for many freshers or people uh, who are beginning to learn. And that's when, you know, courses in Udemy or Coursera or EDX um, are so useful. But then the problem there is that sometimes it becomes so theoretical that many people um, don't find them very uh, useful. But it's a good mix of both. A good, you know, if you strike a balance between f free courses on also some paid certification, I think it will be very, very, uh, very good for you. Uh, so that's one good thing that there is no barrier as such to enter. Regardless of qualification, it's good to have a qualification in statistics, mathematics, or computer science, you know, more of a quantitative degree. But even if you're from non-quantitative degree, you still can learn yourself through certification, online degrees, or probably just doing self-learning and get jobs. And then another question is whether, you know, people uh, expect you to be a specialist or a generalist. Uh, thing is that the number of jobs available uh, in data science are mostly for the experienced people, people having at least a couple of years of experience, right? Then, you know, there's a lot more competition uh, for the fresher jobs, you know, uh, the beginner level jobs these days in data science. And that's uh, the downside of uh, the trend that I just read from the LinkedIn report. Um, so the, the, the barrier to entry when it comes to competition, right, among the fresh graduates from universities has increased over, over the years. And, you know, you have to be better fit to be able to get uh, your first job. But if you have experience, then I think it's much easier for you to move from one role to the other, one sector to the other. It, it becomes much easier for you. And everyone is now looking for specialists, people having expert knowledge on a, on one single area rather than just a generalist knowing a bit of everything that's uh, you know so that's so it's very important therefore to get into the you know the depth of everything rather than uh, the breadth so good to specialize uh, if you are you know someone specializing in some uh, let's say machine learning applications in banking then be a specialist that right if you want to specialize in fraud detection in banking be a specialist there rather than just having a little bit of skills from risk, from sales, from marketing, from operations, you know, that won't help. So that's one advice for you. And for fresher, it's important to do, um, it, you know, it's important to learn, um, again, um, a lot from different sources, but ensure that you also market yourself properly to get your first serve. And that's the most difficult one. Uh, next few questions are uh, like, okay, which sectors uh, are best um, and which sectors hire data scientists the most? Well, um, the first question, there's nothing as such. There's no sector called best. It's often a question I get from people. Uh, it's up to you to uh, decide which sector suits you the best. 
you know, each sector has its own merits and demerits. Um, but the second question is somewhat a, a good question, I would say. Which sectors hire the data science the most? In the recent times, I've seen that the e-commerce sectors, uh, anything related to internet, is hiring data scientists the most. I think it used to be banking and financial service for a very long time. I think for the last decade or so, banking and financial service used to hire the data science the most, but more recently, anything related to internet or more tech driven businesses are hiring data scientists the most. Um, but there are also other sectors, for example, um, retail is, is doing wonderfully well. Healthcare, uh, more importantly, during the pandemic times, um, they're hiring a lot, lot of data scientists. And as usual, banking and financial services also are hiring data scientists. So these are some of the areas, but you can also ex explore other sectors. Um, what are the salaries which company sectors pay the most? Um, well, I think that should not be uh, a reason why you should move to a data science role. If you're already in this role, I think you probably know the salaries. They're not very, very different from other roles. Um, you know, it used to be a perception that you can increase your salary by 40%, 80% by moving to a data science role. That's wrong, actually. Uh, it used to be true to some extent in, in the initial years of, uh, you know, data science, quote unquote, uh, being considered as, as a role, formal role, but that's no longer the case. Um, which company sectors pay the most? Again, I think it's, it's the same thing that what we discussed in the last slide, e-commerce, banking, financial services, tech, like Amazon and all that kind of a company, I think pay a bit more than um, you know the other sectors. But if you are really good, I think your pays uh, will always be great no matter which industry you are in. So for the, the, the top class guys, and girls, I think the pay uh, won't vary a lot. The difference comes if you are more of an average data scientist, right? Then probably you will make more money in banking, financial service, or in, in e-commerce than in, in, say, in manufacturing industry. Um, is it a good idea to uh, switch career? If you're already working in other areas and want to switch to data science, in my view, if you're doing well in your own area, I think there's no point switching to data science. Just because it sounds fancy, I think you should not move into these areas. There's not, nothing extra fancy about it. I think each and every sector is good. If you're a software developer and you are doing well, I think better to be a software developer. That you be there and don't just switch to data science just because everyone is doing that. That's if you are a cryptographer, you are a cybersecurity specialist. You know, I know there are many cybersecurity specialists making way more money than you know average data scientist. So there's no point moving to data scientist. You are if you are really good at you know some other skills and and enjoying that as well as uh, you know doing well there. So but and but if you are keen on sw switching to this field, I think you should do that for whatever reason, be it interest be it you don't like your own area the area that where you're currently working on i think it's still a good area to uh, move into uh, but uh, my experience says that if you are someone with over 10 years of experience it's a bit difficult to get into uh, a new field right um, because the entry criteria will then be very very strict it's always strict for data science and only becoming stricter over time and you will have tough time getting into uh, a new field. And also making, you know, also given the fact that, you know, you will also be expecting more salary because of your experience and so on and so forth. That's not going to work out very well. Uh, some tips for students. Um, well, this is also applicable to experienced people, but most important for students. Uh, hard skills are very important. Uh, it goes without saying. So you have to be good in programming and uh, should should have proper understanding of uh, machine learning and um, applied statistics. So um, yeah, make sure that you practice programming uh, in any of the language, Python, you know, R or C++. Python is the most popular language in uh, machine learning. I think you, you're already aware of that. 
but R, C++, and other programming languages uh, are also, um, yeah, also used in many areas of data science. So, so good to have very good hard skills. Do internships. Um, uh, do as many internships as possible. Real world experience is very different from what you study in university. Uh, so it's important to get uh, real world experience. That helps a lot, especially future, for a fresher, it's becoming very tough to get into it data science for that matter in any other in any field it's, it's tough right so good to get internships in data science and do projects do pet projects at home if you can do then good to have a couple of projects on your cv not just uh, the toy projects but you know end-to-end -end implementation of your data science projects and then networking uh, is goes without saying uh, have have you know, have a profile on LinkedIn, GitHub, uh, if possible, even on Twitter, and try to uh, share your work and update your profile and, and try searching uh, for jobs there. But also important is that try to connect with people. During the pandemics, right, LinkedIn has helped many people finding jobs, right? Not just in data science, but in other fields also. So, and uh, LinkedIn user, uh, um, base is also growing over time. So uh, it's a wonderful platform to, uh, to spend your time. And I mean, it's better than Facebook or Instagram, for example, especially if you're more of a knowledge worker, you want to get, in, you want to do a job, you want to learn from people and you know, it's, it's a much better platform compared to other social media platforms. Okay, so these are some of the things I wanted to say with you. If you have comments, questions, please ask me in the comment section. And I'll try to answer maybe directly or maybe in another another video. Thank you and all the best. Uh, and let's hope that 2021 is better than 2020. Thank you.